It's difficult to remember these two vehicles, so different in style and size, are from the same car making group. Rolls Royce, maker of the Phantom, is owned by BMW of Germany, which also makes the Reborn Mini, two powerful symbols of British automotive engineering heritage. That's not the only power the Phantom symbolises. With its bulk, those slab-sided lofty flanks, and that Greek temple grille on the front, this car is supposed to tell you and the rest of the world that you've arrived. Inside, too, there are clues that the world is meant to be seen differently. There's nothing so crude as a rev counter to tell you what the monstrous 450 horsepower V12 engine is doing. Instead, there's a meter that tells you how much power you have in reserve. It's like being told your buying power rather than just your bank balance. But in these credit crunch, post-excess times, is such a car too crass a symbol? The Phantom might have the dimensions of an oil tanker, but it doesn't drive like one. A 0 to 60 miles an hour time of less than six seconds means it won't be embarrassed by too many cheap cars either. But at 12 to 18 miles a gallon, it might be an idea to meet up with a tanker every now and again. Dynamically, the car is surprisingly agile for such a huge beast. For example, it corners and stops pretty well. There's plenty of space in the back, although the suicide doors do make it slightly awkward to climb in. The back has a lot more sprawling room than many other rivals, although the Bentley Flying Spur, to take one example, is only about half the price of the Phantom. The back is also a pretty good work environment once you're in, but this is like many of the big jets I've flown. You might have a chauffeur or pilot to act for you, but where's the fun if you can't do it yourself? At nearly six metres long and two metres wide, this car is not easy to thread through narrow streets. But with looks that are reminiscent of Lady Penelope's Rolls-Royce in the Thunderbirds puppet show and its rarity value, this car does attract attention, not all of it welcome. Sometimes other drivers' resentment is palpable. The substantial retro feel is well done, especially if you love chrome. For example, the radio buttons remind me of the valve wireless my father was so proud of. But some of the high tech that these chunky buttons conceal is not just quirky, but also baffling. For example, the sometimes very annoying satellite navigation system. But sales are doing well. In 2010, Rolls-Royce sold a record 2,711 cars, which was up 171% on the previous year. And the emerging markets propelled that push. Sales into India were 400% higher than in 2009, and China accounted for a fifth of output. The company expects overall sales to be as high in 2011. This is a car to be seen in, which is ironic as it's at its best outside the big concentrations of population, like crowded cities. When you have the space, no one can hear your wallet scream how big it is. But it's not just about the reactions of others. When you step out of the Phantom, you do feel like a million dollars, which makes the car something of a bargain at £300,000 even if that would buy about 23 minis for you and your closest friends. I'm Rote Jaggi of the Financial Times.